Well, hello and welcome to this first video for chapter 15. Um, as we kind of begin to wrap up material for the year, we're going to talk about Oceania, um, which is the uh, all the islands that are near Australia and New Zealand. So um, there's a lot. There's a lot of islands packed in here, um, and it would be really difficult to, to map it, uh, but you're going to see kind of some highlights here. So um, this covers 3.3 square uh, million square miles, so it's a long uh, stretch of space. There's about 10,000, <clears> excuse me, islands in uh, this area. But most of these islands are small and un uninhabited. Um, so there are obviously larger islands. Papua New Guinea is one we'll talk about. Um, that's the largest of the islands. And then other ones are a collection of islands. Um, so there's just a lot of diversity here about whether you know people live there or not. Um, there's even different types of islands. Uh, they're really classified into three main sections of Micronesia, Melanesia, and Polynesia. And then over here on the far right, we can see uh, some of those countries. And some of them I imagine you've heard of. Uh, Guam is kind of famous because there's a military base there. Uh, the Hawaiian Islands, uh, Fiji, and Samoa, maybe you've heard of before. Um, here we can see kind of the map where it, it kind of outlines where those are at. So even Hawaii up here at the top uh, is in Polynesia. Um, but these are kind of the three uh, classifications. And it's worth noting, like, so Papua New Guinea is only this uh, eastern half of this island right here. This part over here is Indonesia, and it's actually classified as a part of Asia. I'm surprised that this part didn't get made um, the brown color because this is all Indonesia over here. So um, kind of interesting that this is one island body but it's split in half with part of it being classified in Asia and part of it being classified in Oceania, which is really like Australia and Oceania is kind of like all together. It's kind of, it makes up the seventh continent. Um, so as I already said, there's a lot of islands here. Some are big, some are small, some are even controlled by other places. You can see Australia, England, France, New Zealand, and the United States all have territories in this area. Um, this is just showing elevations here. We do have high islands and low islands. Um, Papua New Guinea is an example of a high island. You can see how the color turns red and orange there. Um, and that just kind of has to do with volcanic activity that's been created in that area. Um, so New Guinea is the largest of the islands. Um, and it's called a continental island because it's a larger landmass that only part of it is the country. Um, two political parts there you can actually see where the eastern part is a part of Indonesia, the western part is not. Uh, it is has rugged mountains, that's what makes it a high island, but then there also are some low land sections as well. Here we can kind of see that high elevation uh, that exists. Um, this is a coral reef uh, out here in the ocean. This would be a lagoon area. Uh, we'll talk about atolls, I believe, here in a moment. I think they show up in the slides. Um, high islands also have much more fertile soil. Um, uh, low islands really are very sandy often. There's not um, a lot of, um, of physical matter on the ground, um, just from the way that they're created. So you can really kind of see that high island, um, you know, the, the elevations uh, in these pictures. Um, we're going to skip over this. I think this is just talking about how Hawaii is growing. What we're seeing here is hardened uh, lava uh, when it cools from hitting the ocean or just being exposed to air, it hardens over time. I think that's what we're seeing in that image right there. We might watch that video in class at some point. This starts talking about the low islands. You can just see not very high above the surface of the water. Uh, and that would be kind of true across the whole entire island. Um, and so they can be greatly affected by sea levels as um, climate change happens uh, and ice around the ice cap is melting, ocean levels are raising. So many of these places, it cannot raise much more uh, or the island will be completely submerged under the water surface. Uh, low islands are often formed by coral reefs um, circling underwater volcanoes. So this is what's called an atoll. Uh, and we will do some work in class so we can kind of like see the process of an atoll. This is a video just kind of about that. We're going to skip over that. Again, here we can see that high islands. Um, we see a lot of these thatched roofs on, on houses. Those are very traditional. 
Um, so here is what an atoll looks like and this interior part is called the lagoon. So out here is where the volcano would have formed, usually erupting underneath the surface of the water, causing a seamount. And then over time, as that keeps erupting, uh, it, all that lava hardens and eventually makes the uh, volcano go above the surface. The coral develops around that volcano. And then over time, as the coral develops, it causes the volcano to sink. And eventually the volcano falls below the surface of the water and all that's left is that ring shape are on the outside. As coral also raises and comes above the surface of the of the ocean, it dies and then kind of like turns sandy, sand deposits, you know, because of bird droppings and things cause plants to develop on that. And so we see, you know, what was only coral at one time now turns into sand, which also turns into vegetation. And so there are trees and things that develop on the outside. So it's a very interesting process and it takes thousands and thousands of years uh, to form uh, those. Uh, there are also coastal lagoons talked about here. I feel like this is oh, just showing the different uh, climate types, which we can't even hardly see these colors because we can't zoom in uh, on this. Uh, but there are, you know, mainly we can see tropical in multiple places, tropical climates exist. So uh, very, uh, very humid climate in lots of places, hot uh, and just I would say relatively just warm consistently all year round. We've talked about that with Hawaii, how um, you know the record temperature in Hawaii is 100 degrees. Um, it doesn't get insanely hot there. I mean, 100 degrees is warm, but usually temperatures are fairly consistently in the 70s and 80s all year round, which would be extremely comfortable and why so many people want a vacation there. Um, Papua New Guinea gets 45 inches of rainfall uh, annually. That's a lot. Um, and so, you know, that's going to help with uh, farming. Uh, we also talk in class about the El Nino effect, which is like the shifting of weather patterns uh, as the result of like water currents, which is kind of interesting. Um, the smaller islands are warm as well, but they maybe don't have as much, um, they're affected by monsoons, but they just, they behave somewhat differently and are not usually as fertile of soil because of all that sand. This just kind of talks about where some of those places are located and there's just kind of different monsoon seasons. Um, this shows the resources. And again, it's really almost impossible to read. Uh, because Papua New Guinea is larger here, it's going to have more resources. It does have for its size, rather large amounts of natural gas. Um, usually the smaller the island, the less natural resources they are going to have, um, but there still are valuable resources that help the economies there. Um, we can see some of the things of gold, copper, and timber um, that exist there. Um, it does talk about, this is, um, these are black pearls um, that comes from our textbook, which is, um, I assume that they're all pearls that are black. I actually don't know, um, but pearls grow inside of oysters. Um, so here they're actually kind of being, um, you know, they're not just finding the oysters in, in just in the wild. They must have set these up in some way or for some reason the oysters are attracted to those things that they're developing. Uh, and I think the oyster, the uh, pearl is actually like um, the oyster's way of kind of defending itself. It creates like uh, sand gets inside the oyster and it's like an irritant. So it like forms that hard um, shell of the pearl around the sand to protect itself. Um, so when it gets cut open, there's a beautiful pearl inside. Um, so they have other ways of harnessing resources from the water, but a lot of the fish that comes from the water is actually just consumed and not, you know, sent for export. Uh, there's been a lot of work with using, uh, it gets windy here, especially on those low islands that are flat. So they've uh, built uh, wind turbines and things like that, or it's very sunny most of the time, so they can harness solar power um, just to try to reduce their dependence on um, uh, electricity in a very traditional way. Uh, we've already talked about the soil there and about fish. Um, so this is just a little bit of a recap. There are 10,000 islands in Oceania, three main sections, Melanesia, Polynesia, Micronesia. Some of the islands are large, but other ones are extremely small. Some of them are even uninhabited. Um, some of them are controlled by countries like the United States controls Guam. Uh, New Guinea is the largest island in Oceania. Um, it has two types of islands, high islands, 
and low islands. Let me give some examples there. A lagoon is a shallow body of water separated from a larger body of water by an exposed shoal, reef, or island. Coastal lagoons are the most common type of lagoon. Most islands in Oceania have warm, humid, tropical climates. Papua New Guinea experiences occasional droughts caused by the El Nino effect. And then finally, Papua New Guinea has resources such as gold, copper, fish, and natural gas. So if you will write those in your notes, and that will be a grade that's taken later on. And that will do it for lesson one. Thank you for watching.